Hey guys, welcome to my very first tutorial um, on my YouTube channel, and this is for the for the physics play playlist. So, this very first lesson, what we're going to be talking about, as the title above suggests, is a va is vectors. What is a vector? So, put simply, a vector is a quantity. So, in the world, qu um, quantities are divided into two separate things two separate categories and one of which we are we know most commonly and the other of which we don't really know of so the one that we know is called a scalar now what a scalar is I'm um, what a scalar is is a quantity that has a magnitude but no direction now what do I mean with this what do I mean by having a magnitude but no direction? Um, you guys actually know this uh, because in real life, in in your everyday life, you are you are always encountering scalars. For example, a scalar in your life that you would see in your everyday life would be if you're in a car, and your speedometer would read your speed, and speed is a scalar because it has a magnitude which is let's say 44 kilometers per hour that's your magnitude and does it have a direction? no there's nowhere in this 44 kilometers per hour that tells us where the car is headed um, another example of a scalar is mass now mass has no direction as let's say you you are someone of 44 kilograms now this in no way tells us direction also because 44 kilogra kilograms what if you associate a direction to it, it makes no sense 44 kilograms north no <laughs> that doesn't make any sense so this is these two examples are examples of a scalar now a vector is not that not as intuitive as at first because you don't really encounter it in your everyday life so a vector is really similar to a scalar however in Instead of on top of just having a magnitude, a vector has a direction. Now this is really important in physics because um, in order to calculate different um, problems, you need to know the direction because um, direction is of crucial importance, as I'll show you in later ex in later tutorials. And we won't touch on that yet because this lesson is solely focusing on what a vector is. So, an example of a vector. Now, um, speed. Although it is a scalar, it has a vector counterpart. Now, this is probably the most used example in any, anywhere, in in your classroom anywhere. So, sp your teacher is going to be talking. It's probably going to be talking to you about speed being a scalar, and it's. And if you've, if if your teacher has already talked about this, they would say that the vector counterpart is something called velocity. Now you might have heard this in in your everyday life, or oh, this word might uh, might be used interchangeably with the word speed. However, in physics, physicists are really particular about this. You cannot get speed and velocity mixed up. Both of these mean two separate things. Speed has a magnitude, but no direction. Now this is really important because velocity has a direction. So when you say speed, you cannot put a direction in here. And when you have velocity, you have to put a direction. And I haven't shown you what a velocity really is yet. Like, how do you put in direction? Do we just put, like, north somewhere? Actually, it is just that simple. So, let's say we are using the, sa the same 44 kilometers per hour for velocity. Now, how do we uh, um, convert this 44 kilometers? Oh, I should probably have copied that. Anyway, um... How do we convert this 44 kilometers from a scalar, which is speed, into velocity, which is a vector? Um, there are many ways you, you could have done it. Um, one way is to add the word to the north. If you're traveling 44 kilometers to the north, let's say you're going from um, Texas to Toronto, you're traveling to the north, or a bit, not really north, but to an angle to the north or northeast or whatever it is. I'm not a ge uh, geography person. I'm, I'm a physicist and a mathematician. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So, um, yeah. So, 
we get the idea from Texas to Toronto or to Ontario. I guess you want to talk about provinces and states. Um, you're traveling to the north. However, this is quite cumbersome and and, and it will be quite tedious to write it every single time. So physicists, as being the lazy people they are, they've come up with a clever little notation. Oh, I just drew, I just clicked the wrong thing. Okay, they've come up with a clever notation um, to shorten this whole thing. All you gotta do is at the end of your 44 kilometers per hour square brackets capital M representing north close brackets that is all you need so this is now a vector because what do you have now you have a magnitude and you have a direction same thing goes for distance distance now is distance is distance a scalar or a vector? What do you guys think? 44 kilometers. Is that a distance? I mean, is that a scalar or a vector? It is obviously a scalar because when you say um, 44 kilometers, let me write it down, 44 kilometers, there is no direction anywhere in that thing. It's just 44 kilometers. Where? We don't know because it's just a scalar. However, how do we, using the previous knowledge from velocity, how would we um, tr uh, convert distance into a vector? Now, the counterpart to distance, like how velocity was the speed, the, counter the vector counterpart of distance is called displacement. Now, displacement is um quite complex when you first learn it and i'll talk about this in another video because i don't think i have enough time to talk about displacement right now so displacement is the counterpart to vac to to uh distance because it has um a direction just like vac uh, velocity and sim and just like velocity all you could do to convert um, a distance to a displacement is to add in the little direction so let's just copy that paste it bring it down exactly as you see it so once again let's recap a scalar is a quantity that has a magnitude but no direction for example a speed of 44 kilometers per hour or mass for which of 44 kilograms or distance of 44 kilometers in none of these examples were their direction however when you um, the counterpart to the scale the other category um, the vector category of um, consists of well vectors <laughs> um, and these vectors have magnitude plus a direction and how do we add the direction in we just add whatever whichever way it's going so north northeast or let's say you're not just going north let's say you're not just going in a linear direction that's well in like into one of the axes you're going off the axis so in the middle of two axes so let's say let's draw I'm, I'm just gonna draw the axis for illustration purposes so let's say oh that's a bad axis but whatever let's just say this is the um, north and south axis, and this is the east-west axis. Um, and what if um, your vector of displacement 44 kilometers, what if you set up from your house and travel 44 kilometers to the shopping mall? <laughs> 44 kilometers. Well. Anyway, so let's say you travel 44 kilometers of um, an angle of, let's say, 44 degrees. Well, I can't write degrees in here because it's paint, but yeah. So let's say you traveled 44, uh, 44 kilometers and the angle between the east axis, uh, axis and the vector diagram, I mean, in the vector is 44 degrees. Now, how would we write that? Because for north, if you're just traveling in the north direction, so I'm going to represent that with a blue arrow. Um, so you would just Oh, oops, that's not mine. It's a pencil. You just go directly onto, if I can go onto, <laughs> the north axis. However, what if you're off it? And 
the angle between this axis and the vector is 44 degrees. Now, how would you write that into, into the quantity? It is actually quite simple. The format is the format to define the, the, the direction is um, whatever axis you're starting from to, so let's say in this case east, and the angle between that axis and the vector diagram, I mean, and the vector, sorry, 44 degrees. I can write degrees right there. I'll just, I'll just draw a little circle later on. And whatever the wherever it is pointing towards so from the east 44 degrees to the north as you can see right here you start from east you travel 44 degrees north and you have this line or an alternative alternative way of writing this would be north 46 degrees east and both mean exactly the same thing. Now, how do I get 46? Well, we know that the north axis and the east axis both are at right angles to each other. So if we know this angle right here, if we know this angle right here is 44 degrees, then using mathematics, we know that um, 90 minus 44 equals to 46. So we can conclude that this angle right here is 46 degrees. So we can state the direction in two separate ways. One way is east, so you're starting off at the east. Let me use a different color. You're starting off at the east and you're traveling 44 and you're turning from the east axis, turning this way 44 degrees to the north. Or you could start off at the north, sort of at the north, and travel to the vector 40, 40, uh, 46 degrees east. And both ways are totally acceptable. However, there is a preferred way. Normally, your teacher would prefer it if your angle was between 40, like was below 45 degrees. So let's say you have an angle of 44 degrees or 46 degrees. Your teacher would prefer you to write one, to use the one with to use the angle of 44 degrees because it is less than 45 degrees. It's just a convention. It's easier, and the reason why we do this is because of nav navigational purposes that date dates back to the Stone Age. I'm just kidding, but yeah, it is used for navigation purposes for like sea people, sea people, <laughs> sea people, fishermen. So, um, yeah. So let's use that in our example right here. So 44 kilometers, and let's say, and let's use the same example. 44 kilometers east, 44 degrees, sorry, east capital, 44 degrees north, close brackets. Okay, Let me just expand that. Okay, so there you have it. And this is just a basic overview of what a vector really is. In the next um, tutorial, I'll be going through vector addition, subtraction, multiplication, and all that other stuff. So until then, I'll see you guys. Peace out.